What's good with y'all, man? It's your boy Will back with another video. Now, today, 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 we're going to be discussing and bringing up the fact if Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, JLK, it's funny, I got his jersey. He's the first guy I ever, um, like, he's the first brown jersey I ever bought. Uh, he's one of my favorite players. He's from Africa. You know, guys, if you guys don't know, I'm African. Um, so yeah, he's one of the first players I ever got jersey of. I'm gonna go get me a D Dub jersey for show for them road games. <laughs> go into the road games looking like a menace. Give me a D Dub jersey. Y'all comment down below what jersey y'all are watching. Y'all think I should get. But um, so today we're gonna be discussing Jeremiah Uwusu Core Mode. Now um, J O K man, coming out. He what year did he get drafted? 2021. 2021. I remember his draft so much. He was supposed to go like top 20. And then he had like a heart condition. And his heart condition dropped him into the second round. And the Browns traded up and got Jay, okay? Now, which was so out of the ordinary, just to give you guys a little back history. You know, Andrew Berry doesn't value linebackers. So it was just crazy that everybody was pounding the table. I was, uh, any, everybody on Twitter, pounding the table. Go get JOK. You know what I'm saying? JOK spoiler. We need a linebacker. Go get JOK. And then we got him, which was crazy. Because for one, he, like I said, he doesn't really value linebackers. Um, so didn't expect him to pick a, pick a second round linebacker and trade up for him. That was crazy. Um, but his first year, rookie year, um, I think he was one of the highest graded linebackers out of the rookie class besides Michael Parson. I think he was top five. I think he's a top 10 graded linebacker in the league, honestly. Um, I think his first year, he had a higher linebacker grade or a higher PFF grade than Matt Milano. And we all know Matt Milano's good. Um, he had 72.5. Now, JOK. Um, JOK, in my opinion, has all the talent in the world of being a top five linebacker in this league. I've always thought he'd be like a top five linebacker. Um, I've been saying that since the beginning of time. I, I don't necessarily think I'm wrong still to this day, uh, despite his development being slowed down a little bit due to injury. Um, but the guy has all the skills in the world. He's fast. He's probably, he remember, he was drafted to be the Lamar Jackson stopper. You know what I'm saying? To be that guy that, huh, huh, stop. Okay, Lamar, look like he about to scramble. Oh, yeah, JOK, go get him. You know what I'm saying? And he, my, Lamar did get hurt on that one play where JOK did go and get him, and he chased him down. Kind of caught Lamar off guard, and that would lead kind of to the injury. Um, but not to hear nor there, um, I, I do feel like JOK still has all the talent in the world. And um, the reason we haven't seen the production of where I thought he would be at by now, well, I mean, he's only in his, in turn his third year, you know what I'm saying? But where I thought he should be at by now, um, for one, Joe Woods. And I'm not the guy to, like, give a lot of excuses to players, you know, um, but – at the same time, we got to sit back and realize, you know, the situation that kind of was at hand with our defensive team. Um, Joe Woods was hired in um, as a – well, if I'm not mistaken, you guys correct me if I'm wrong always in the comments. But Joe Woods was kind of like a DB coach. But he was our defensive coordinator, but he specialized with DBs. So, um, for one, the way we used him and our, our, our players really from that 2021 year – to 2022 kind of regressed man like our defense was so bad and so piss poor um that the whole it's just almost like how ohio state looked against michigan like it kind of dropped the value on our whole team just to how bad our defense was you know our defense was bad um like everybody everybody from that 2021 that had a decent year had a, a worse year besides miles garrett uh, and I feel like JOK was definitely one of those people that was hurt by Joe Woods and everything that was going on in that Browns locker room. The people wanted him fired and nobody believed in it. So, like, when you're the linebacker and everybody's doing what they want to do, you got Delpit doing what he wants, Newsom doing what he wants, Ward doing what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Everybody doing what they want to do because nobody trusts and believes that the message that's getting uh, set down from the defensive coordinator, I feel like it made everybody look worse on the end. And like I said, I'm not a guy to give up excuses, but the, this guy was a rookie outperforming starters in this league. And the, another thing about JLK is he only started 58% of his games in his entire career. Both seasons, he only started 20 games. I mean, 10 games. 
So if he could just get a healthy season under a stable, stable defensive coordinator and everybody's listening, everybody's doing the right thing, it's no drama, I don't see why he couldn't have a breakout year by now. It's year three. He knows football. He knows the speed of the game. Not to mention last year, he had that tragic death in his family. Um, and that that probably took a lot on his mental, man. I mean, like, I'm not going to get too into it, but that was very tragic and traumatizing for him to go through that. And then on top of that, he had injuries both years. Um, so he just really had a lot going on. Year one, he was really good. Um, he had an injury. And then on top of year one, like, he really wasn't getting used as much. Um, he only started 10 games year one. And he, like I said, he outperformed a lot of top linebackers in the league. Um, and then year two, he came out. We had all that drama going on in our defense. And then he had to deal with that tragic, tragic death in his family. And that really affected him on top of having that injury. Year, year two was really a bad year for him, man. Like one of the worst years is probably a, of his football career in his life. Um, and then he still posted a 62.5 PFF grade. You know, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't like great at the same time. So if that's the worst, I feel like that's the worst we'll see a JOK. Now I might be wrong. People might look back at it. Um, you know what I'm saying? And you're from now, look at this video. And like, you were so wrong on this guy, but I feel like that was the worst. And I feel like a lot of people are not realizing how much he went through, man. You know, we got a lot of people that wants and bang the table for linebackers. Like, uh, get a linebacker in the draft. Uh, bring in another vet. Uh, but, I mean, hey, we got a guy that could be a potential top 10 linebacker this year in our room with a walk, with Taki Taki. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe it's not as bad as people think it is. Maybe that linebacker room is not as terrible as people think it is. I feel like decent contribution from a walk and JOK taking that step, that's a great linebacker room. That's a 1A, 1B. Well, that's a 1A. Yeah, one, I said that one. 1A, 2B. Or one, you know, no, that's a 1 2 punch at the linebacker. Then you got Taki Taki rolling in there. And I feel like I'm missing a guy at the linebacker position I can't think of right now. But I feel like I'm missing one more name. But not the here nor there. I feel like linebacker work will be good. And as long as JOK can stay healthy and the defense can, let's just, you know what I'm saying? I have top 10 projections for our defense. Some of you guys might say top 15. Some of you guys may say top five. Let's just say we get a top 14 defense. Not like a bottom five like last year. Let's just say we get a top 14 defense. Top 14 defense, I feel like in JOK Pan and starting all games, or it's not even, let's, let's say, because he hasn't done that his call career. Let's just say he starts 15 out of 17 games. I feel like he could very easily be a top 10 linebacker still. With those numbers watered down, I feel like he could still very easily have a breakout year. And him having a breakout year would do worlds wonders for our defense. All the talent is there. It's not like he's like um, inconsistent or he, it's not like he's not talented or he's not showing it. Um, it's all there. You see the speed on film. You see the tackle ability on film. You see the coverage skills on film. It's all there. It's just a matter of him putting it all together and having a year of drama-free, man. That's the one thing that's been going on with this Browns team. It's just like it's been so much different distractions going on for some of these young cats on our team. Like, year 2021, we had the whole Odell situation, the whole Baker situation. You had all of that going on. 2022, the whole Deshaun Watson situation, the whole Joe Woods situation. Everything going on with Clowney. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just always something. And now we're entering 2023. And the last since what? The last two years, since we went 11 and 5, we haven't had no drama. And I feel like a drama-free work environment, a drama-free, you know what I'm saying? A fresh start and a fresh voice at head at the defensive coordinator position will exclusively help these young guys out a lot that has been kind of wavering. But the talent is there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was just, that's why I was just talking about Perrion Renfrey. Like, you know, we really haven't got a chance to really 
give these guys exactly what they need as far as helping them, as far as tools. These last two years, our rookies kind of been out there just playing off of strictly talent. So I think it's going to do wonders just having a voice that everybody can listen to and having a stable locker room, a stable chemistry, and a drama-free work environment. Now, this football stuff is going to always happen, but the stuff we were dealing with was out of the ordinary, man. Like the Odell situation, the Baker situation, the Clowney situation, the Jarvis situation, Dr. The Watson. These are all out of the ordinary. Don't see this at football type of stuff that we were dealing with. I feel like we're just having, a, like I said, just to conclude the video, I really feel like if we have a stress free, drama free, and JOK can play healthy and play like his normal self, he's going to have a breakout year. The, all the talent is there. He has all the capability in the world to be a top 10 linebacker in this league, and we shall see. I'm going to go off on the lift and say he has, as long as he's healthy and he plays 15 games, I think he has the best year of his career. I think he posted at least a 75.0 PFF grade. You guys comment down below what y'all feel, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button. If you guys got a guy or you got a video idea or a suggestion, always comment down below, man. Um, I appreciate y'all. Hit the notification bell. Videos every day. And I'm out. Y'all stay safe. Peace.